what really drove him to start writing the way he did. Jay started writing down the lyrics. It was something that Jay needed to like express, vent about. He was writing it and talking about it. He was getting it out of him, so it made it better. He used to scribble. He couldn't even understand what he was writing. It was like chicken scratch. He would write it down so little that nobody else could actually understand what he was writing, so nobody would take his rhyme. You look at his book when he go out the room, you're like, what is this, hieroglyphics? That's his thing. He would sit at the table, he would write the rhyme, and he'll make a beat up and he'll just say it. And then he, no, that ain't right. And he'll rewrite it until he felt that it was right. He always worked on his flow every day. Just look inside the mirror and just practice his rhyme flow. Like zone out everything and be rhyming to himself, rhyming to himself, hearing music inside his head. Late at night, when everyone was sleeping, you would just hear him banging on the table and mumbling. We used to get up and be like, Sean, Everybody is asleep. You ain't ready to go to bed yet? No, no. I gotta get this down. I gotta get this down. Yeah, he would get on the own table with a fork and a spoon or something, and he would be beating away. Then my mother went out and brought him a bebop. At that time, it's like a machine that makes all kinds of sounds, and that that's when we wanted to kill her. <laughs> He listened to Run DMC, Curtis Blow. He was the first one around the projects with a Doug Fresh and Slick Rick tape. And we listened to that tape all day long. You'll keep hearing him rewinding it and playing it, rewinding it and playing it until he actually knew what that person was saying. And then he's reading a lot. Anything he can get his hand on, he'll read. Like all different dictionaries and everything. He studied dictionaries. It was a dictionary that had all kinds of words that rhyme with each other. His lyrics was crazy. He had so much flow, like he could, he could just kill it, man. This cat Slate on the projects was calling him Jazzy, and then he just dropped out the letters and just fit Jay Z. He had a different style of rap. Practice, practice, never reenact this. The simple fact is, I'm real good at this. He was more like a fast tongue rapper, the diggity diggity, the like that type of style. This diggity style is making the mind of diggity 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 jazz. You know what I'm talking about? I'm going too fast. Here's the warning, you might want to get gas. There's only one for 90 miles, and my stops to last. He was rhyming real fast. But you can still understand them. Guys come around like want to rap, blah, blah, blah. We always go, go get Jay and let Jay rap against them. You always hear about them somewhere in the projects battling with somebody or at somebody high school battling them. So come on to see me, bro, rhymes. If you're lucky, I'll let you be me one time. You get with me, boy, Miff G to Frankenstein. Dear boy, stop yanking mine. Ah! Everybody used to look up to Jazz because he was the only guy from around the way that was getting recognition from Rama. Jazz lived on the other side of the projects from us. I think somebody introduced him and Jay together, and they both was interested in music at the time. I mean, Jay just got together right in Rama's, exchanging Rama styles. Jazz was the older guy. He took Jay under his wing. Jazz was schooling him. Everywhere he went, Jay was by his side. Jazz was one of the first MCs to even have a major deal with a major label. Jay was actually on Jazz's first single. Yeah, my name is Jazz, I'm a partner, Jay. And Jay appeared in the video. And that kind of introduced Jay to the world. Jay bought the sunshine and the seas of pearls. Band bought the hair skin, beautiful girl. Jay-Z came flying down from the ceiling on the rope. Yeah, I'm doing it. It's funny, man. Working so true and deep. Yeah, that was like his first video. Everybody was excited about it because it was somebody that we knew that was making a record that had a video. If that album takes off, then Jay's in the game. But that record didn't do too bad. They tried to promote Jazz, you know, this big guy from Marcy. Like Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, then that ain't him. Just let you know how stupid the industry people are. This guy's from the hood, like the hood hood. That's like taking a tiger and telling the tiger, you're a rabbit now. That's what I think Jay had to really sit back and realize, like, whoa, what am I getting myself into? What he's seen with jazz is the bad side of the industry. That taught him to be more aware, and that some record companies are shady. And when you see the bad side of the industry, sometimes you're like, I ain't going through that. And that's when he didn't really want to do it no more. He didn't really want to rap.